and I lead a church in South East London with my husband. And I'm very excited to be able to talk to you about Unleash Presence. Wow, the presence of God is just a topic that just inspires me and fills me with so much hope and passion and it's really exciting. The whole Unleash theme is really exciting but the presence of God is amazing and I wouldn't be the person that I am today without knowing the presence of God. So what is the presence of God? Well, let's start by reading um, in Acts 5 verse 17 to 25. It says, the high priest and his officials who were Sadducees were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. But an angel of the Lord came at night and opened the gates of the jail and brought them out. Then he told them, go to the temple and give the people this message of life. So at daybreak, the apostles entered the temple as they were told and immediately began teaching. When the high priest and his officials arrived, they convened the high council, the full assembly of the elders of Israel. Then they sent for the apostles to be brought from the jail for trial. But when the temple guards went into the jail, the men were gone. So they returned to the council and reported, the jail was locked securely with the guards standing outside. But when we opened the gates, no one was there. When the captain of the temple guard and the leading priest heard this, they were perplexed, wondering when it would all end. Then someone arrived with startling news. The men you put in jail are standing in the temple, teaching the people. So the captain went with his temple guards and arrested the apostles, but without violence, for they were afraid the people would stone them. Wow, what is so amazing about that story is, you know, here are these apostles who are in jail and an angel comes and sets them free. That's amazing in itself. But the fact that they've been put in jail for preaching the gospel and then, and I can't imagine a jails in those times especially were particularly nice places. And then they immediately go and start teaching. Immediately as they got to the temple, they started teaching. That is boldness. I don't think I would have done that. I think I would have been like, mm, let me check where my enemies are. Let me see, are the people liking me? Are they gonna be for me or against me? How's this gonna go? And we can all be intimidated, can't we? I'm sure we've all experienced intimidation at some point in our life. Let's face it, even if we kind of okay at conflict, none of us really like it. And yet here the disciples walked into a situation where they knew that there would be trouble for them. And yet they were obedient. They were obedient to God. They were obedient to what the angel had told them to do. Do you know what? I would love to be totally obedient to God. But I know that sometimes I get intimidated and I get afraid. Now, there have been times in my life where I've been bold. Uh, maybe not for the right reasons, however. So here, a little story to uncover myself, just between you and me. Sometimes when I have felt there's been an injustice, let's just say, I have seen red. It's like a red mist comes down. Anyone know what I'm talking about or is it just me? So when this red mist comes down and I see this thing that's happened and I've just got this off, that's so unfair, then I go to action. So an example of this would be, I was standing outside my house and a bus came by and my car was parked outside my house and as the bus came by, it took off my wing mirror and the bus didn't even stop. And I was so mad, I literally just got in my car and I thought, right, I'm gonna follow this bus and I'm gonna tell him what he's done to my car and I'm gonna make him pay for it. So I followed him and then every time I got near the bus, as it, because it had stopped at a bus stop. The bus pulled away before I could get out of the car and got in the bus. So I thought, I know what I'll do. I took a shortcut and I got to a bus stop a couple of miles away and I waited to park the car and I got out and I waited for the bus. Held the bus down when it came, then I got on the bus and I said to the bus driver, excuse me, but you, do you realize that you knocked off my wing mirror back a few miles down the road? And he's like, what? I said, you, you knocked off my wing mirror and you didn't even stop. He said, no, I didn't. I said, yes, you did. And he was like, no, I didn't. And so I said, well, 
I'm going to go down the bus and I'm going to see if there's any witnesses. And so I did. I went down the bus and I said, did anyone see this happen? Would anyone like to be my witnesses? And some people did. But do you know what? If you said to me today, just go get on a bus and shout out to everybody, I would not do it. I would be too scared. But it was this sense of justice, that the injustice of it that came over me. And I think it's maybe a little bit like that when we're filled with the presence of God. It's like something comes over us and we have a boldness. We're filled with a passion where we can just be obedient. But without the presence of God, we're just ourselves and we're intimidated and we're afraid. So the presence of God in my life, I know has been so important and has really changed who I am. As a child, I was very shy. In fact, even at the age of 11, I remember bursting into tears when a man spoke to me because I just didn't know what to do. I mean, how crazy is that? But I know that there was a moment where I encountered Holy Spirit and something changed in me. And I got a boldness that I hadn't had before. When we talk about the presence of God, we're talking about God. You see, Holy Spirit is God. And the presence of God is the manifestation of God through the Holy Spirit. It's his manifest presence. It's his tangible presence. It's who he is to us. And the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And when we know that we're children of God, then we know who we are and we know what our rights are. We know the authority that we carry and we realise all that we have to release, all that God has invested in us. And it's not about being good enough. It's not about working harder. It's not about being a better person. There have been times in my life where I definitely have not been the best person. There have been times in my life where I have definitely been in rebellion and yet God has been gracious and used me. I remember at the age of 14, myself and a friend, we were on a mission trip, a little mission trip locally, and we stopped somebody in the street who had one leg shorter than the other, and we asked her if we could pray. And as we prayed, her leg grew, and literally in front of our eyes, and I don't know who was more startled, myself and my friends, or the lady we were praying for. But that was the power of God. It's not about us. It's about who God is. It's about his healing power. It's about God wanting to do signs, wonders and miracles. It's about God wanting to change lives. And yet we can so easily be intimidated by what other people might think of us. There was definitely a time in my life where I could have been intimidated. Um, so when I first met my husband, now husband, he obviously wasn't there, I'd got in with this kind of crowd, this group of people who were his friends, and yet he was away, he was away working somewhere else. So when he came back, I was already then friends with this group, and we were sitting around camping, and it was, we were sitting around by the fire, and it was late at night, and people got to talking about what happens to you when you die. And when it came to my turn, I said, well, I, I'm not afraid of dying, because I know that God is with me. I know that I'm going to be with Jesus forever. And then the conversation kind of moved on. But as I left the fire that night and went off to the, clean my teeth, suddenly Paul was next to me and he said to me, if you ever speak to my friends about God like that again, then I will make sure that you are not a part of this group. So I had a decision to make. Was I going to be quiet about my faith or was I going to share it? But you know what? God is a living God and God works in our lives. And I was able to share story after story over the coming months and years. And even though Paul didn't like the fact that I was a Christian and he would say, it's a cult, what are you doing? You're talking rubbish, don't speak to my friends about that. And they would you know, often take the mickey out of me because I was the only one who was following Jesus in that crowd. And there were times where, you know, they would definitely be doing things that weren't godly. And yet I stood my ground. I stood by who I was and I decided that I wouldn't be intimidated. But it definitely wasn't in my strength. It was the power of God. It was God's presence that helped me. It's because God had met me and filled me with his Holy Spirit. And there was a boldness where there hadn't been that boldness before. You see, to really stand up for God. 
He doesn't expect us to do it on our own. When, the, when we read about those disciples at the beginning of Acts, we can read that they were cowering in that upper room. They were locked away. And Jesus had told them, wait for the Holy Spirit to come. And when the Holy Spirit comes and falls upon them, that's when they get the boldness. And that's what the presence of God can do for us. It can give us boldness. It can break through that fear of man and intimidation. But not only that, but we can see signs, wonders and miracles that help us to share our faith, that help us share and show people that God is alive, that he is a loving God, that he wants to encounter us with himself, that he wants to bring freedom and hope to us so that we can share with our friends, with our neighbours, with our friends at school and college, wherever we find ourselves, that actually there is a living God. And whatever is going on around us, you know what? God is with you. God cares. God loves you. And he wants you to know his presence. There was one time where we often go around the parks and the high street, it's something called park pastors, where we go and we look out for anyone who might be in need. And sometimes we offer them hot drinks in the winter. And there was a group of young people over this park. And as I approached them, I heard them say, oh, quick, it's a Christian. It's like, hide it, hide it. Da-da. And they were, uh, I don't know, smoking something they shouldn't have been. And so I said to them, hey, listen, you don't need to worry about that. You don't need to take that stuff because I know that there is a God who wants to give you joy, who wants to take anxiety away from you, who wants to give you peace. And it costs nothing. It's not illegal. You can still drive. You can still do all sorts of things and it is, will not cost you a penny. And they're like, what? What are you talking about? So I say, God loves you and he wants you to experience his love. And they're like, yeah, what? So I said, try it. How about you try it? So they're like, okay, go on and you go, you go. So eventually a couple of them say, okay. So they put their hands out in front of them because I asked them to. And I said, okay, I'm just going to invite Holy Spirit to come and fill you. God's Holy Spirit to come. And so they stood there in the dark, in the park with their hands out in front of them. And I just invited Holy Spirit to come. And one of them began to laugh. And one of them just went really quiet. And their friends are like, what's happening? What's happening? And then they were like, this is so good. This is really, this is so fun. Wow, I feel so amazing. I feel so full of peace. I feel so happy. And then they all wanted to have a go. So we prayed for them and we asked God to come and fill them with his Holy Spirit. Why did God want to do that to them? Because he wants you to, and others to experience his love, to know that he is a good God, to know that he has more for you than what you can see in the natural, more for you than what you can experience in the natural. God wants freedom over you and over me and over those around us. And so eventually, going back to my story of Paul, who is now my husband, I shared many stories with him. And then he also had encountered God. He'd had his knee prayed for and it was healed. Until he got to the point where he was like, you know what, I want to follow Jesus. And then it was amazing because we saw so many of our friends give their life to Jesus. And we saw so many miracles and healings. There was one time where our friend, he was completely covered in eczema all over his body. And we prayed and it instantly disappeared. And all those around us were like, whoa, we can't believe it. And there were many, many stories that I could tell you about how God stepped in. And yes, we still see God do amazing things today. It's not about us. It's not about us being good enough, but it's about who God is. And he wants to display his power. He wants to show the world who he is. And he wants to use you and he wants to use me, but we can't do it in our own strength. And maybe just as the disciples had to wait, maybe for you, you just need to wait. Maybe you've been asking the Holy Spirit to come and fill you. Don't give up. Don't stop asking. Ask him to come. Maybe some of you have been filled with the Holy Spirit before, but you're feeling a bit flat. Maybe life and current circumstances, you're just thinking, well, I don't know, I don't know about this God stuff. Ask God to fill you afresh. Ask God to come. Be brave. For some of you, 
actually, you know the power of God. But God has even more for you. You know, whenever I think, wow, God, that's amazing. You've changed me so much. The Holy Spirit will come and I will encounter him and I will change something. I'll say, wow, I didn't even know I need change in there. I'm sure other people knew, but I didn't realise myself. And it's like we can get bigger and bigger on the inside. Because God brings freedom over us more and more and more. And today, God wants to bring freedom over you. And today, God wants to use you to bring healing to others. If you're sick right now, why don't you put your hand on the area of pain? And let's just pray. Holy Spirit, would you come? Would you bring healing right now? We thank you that you are a loving God. Thank you, Jesus, that you paid the price for our sickness. And Jesus, I thank you for the commission that you've given us to go heal the sick, set the captives free, preach your gospel, raise the dead. God, we want to be walking in power. We want to be walking in the authority that you've already given us. But we can't do that without your Holy Spirit. So why don't we just invite Holy Spirit to come now? And there are many gifts of the Holy Spirit. He wants to come and he wants to fill you and he wants to give you his gifts. Let's just close our eyes if you want to, if that helps. So put your hands out that you're going to receive a gift. And I just want to say, Holy Spirit, would you come? We invite you into our lives. We invite you to come fill us with Fill us afresh. And you know, sometimes when you encounter the Holy Spirit, you start to cry. Sometimes you laugh. Sometimes maybe you feel like a funny feeling inside. Sometimes maybe you feel a bit shaky. Sometimes you can feel nothing. You know what? It's not about what we feel. It's about the change that happens. That is what's important. And when we ask, God says, when we ask, he will give us what we're asking for. He is a good father. So keep asking. And if you've been filled with the Holy Spirit, don't be afraid to just every morning say, Holy Spirit, come and fill me afresh today. And ask, ask him what adventures, what adventures have you got for me today? What are we going to do together today? Because he's got an adventure for you.